Today I'm going to go over the Florida All-State Audition in the year of 2020, as well as talk about whether or not you should be doing All-State, what to do as you prepare for All-State, and some tips to help you on the day you audition. All of that coming up. Stay tuned. What's going on everybody? My name's Aaron, helping musicians get better, faster through performances, educational videos, and product reviews. And again, today I'm going over just some general tips and considerations for you to make when you're thinking about auditioning for Allstate in 2020. Now, before we dive too far into it, let's talk about if you should or should not do Allstate in the first place. Believe it or not, most of the things I'm going to say for you to consider, not a lot of them actually have to do with your playing ability. And one of the things you might want to consider before even thinking about auditioning for Allstate is, can you feasibly make it happen in terms of if you audition and you make it, can you get there and participate? We get really caught up on doing the audition and making the band that we forget that we're making a band. We have to actually like play with a group at some point. The rehearsals and the concert and all that kind of stuff, that takes place at the Florida Music Education Association Conference. We're blessed here in the state of Florida that they like to put the, essentially the music teacher conference and the Allstate events together at the same time, which is great because you're actually performing for a lot of people who actually know what you're doing and can appreciate what you're doing, as well as a ton of parents for people who are in the ensembles. Now, the great thing for me and for all of my students here is it happens here in Tampa, and I teach primarily here in Hillsborough County. If you're outside of Hillsborough, maybe Pinellas or Polk, you're kind of far away. Um, and so you're going to have to consider you have to be there for the band if you make it. And not all band programs will provide you transportation or housing or anything like that. Some do, especially if they have multiple students who make the band, but if you're the only one, they might not help you with that transportation and that lodging. So one of my big points is make sure you are open in your conversations with your parents and your band director to make sure that they understand that you are auditioning and especially with your parents or your guardians that they are going to have to take you probably depending on your age they're probably going to have to take you to your audition but they're also probably going to have to take you to tampa for the convention they're probably going to have to be around in the convention for the most part they're also going to have to provide you have to get a, you're going to have to get a hotel of some sort now a lot of those accommodations are taken care of and i'm going to leave a link below to the conference and they will kind of flesh out a little bit more of those more of that information but just consider it and just know that that is a thing that you're going to have to think about and you're going to have to be open and have a conversation with your parents and your band director or your music teachers just to make sure that it is something that you can even do if you make the group. And then the other thing is most of your preparation is going to happen over the summer and many of you don't have access to your instruments over the summer. You know, it's not strange that people who play low brass instruments just don't get their hands on their instruments over the summer. It just happens a lot. You have to turn them in. Schools have to do inventory. Maybe you're out of it for like a month or something like that. Or the school just, you know, if you're not in school, the school just doesn't let you have an instrument. That can happen. And unless you're willing to rent an instrument out, you might not be able to practice throughout the entire summer. Now, does that mean you can't get your instrument, you know, when school starts? And does that mean that you cannot prepare it and be ready for your audition in enough time? No, I'm not saying that. You could possibly do that. However, it's tech, it's right now at the filming this, it's June. The audition has been out for about two or three weeks now. I guarantee you your competition is already starting to work on it because I know in my private lessons, we've already started touching the Allstate materials. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying you're not helping yourself make it if you don't have your horn for two months of preparation time. And that's the other thing to consider is summer schedules are crazy and even though we are kind of in a weird scheduling time right now with everything going on, you also need to consider if you happen to have any camps that are still going on, if you happen to have any trips or family vacations or anything that are still happening, are you going to have time to actually work on this thing or you know, are you getting a summer job and that's going to take a lot of your time and energy. If you don't have time to dedicate to preparing for the audition, it's going to put a lot of stress on you and a lot of strain and it might, you know, potentially 
really mess with your summer. Um, if you don't designate some time to make sure that you can dedicate to practicing the audition piece. And as a teacher, I look at doing Allstate as it is an extra thing and it's, it's not necessarily something you have to do. So if it's gonna be a huge stressor for you and you think it's gonna be more of a stressor than it is going to be an educational experience, then you might wanna reconsider auditioning in the first place. And then one of the last things to consider before we get to, into the tips of the actual audition is if you are in high school and you have marching band camp that starts, you know, July or uh, early August, and then you have to go like, you have marching band camp and then like a week or two later, you're gonna have your Allstate audition. If you're gonna have marching face or you're, you know, you're essentially going to take an entire week off because you're gonna have band camp and you're gonna be playing for eight hours a day and I mean, I wouldn't be that person who practices after band camp or during band camp, but you do you. Um, if if that's if that band camp is going to get in your way or getting ready for marching band season is going to get in your way or is gonna take up a lot of time or is just gonna make you not in the best shape to be doing that audition, that might be something to consider as well. So now that you are for sure doing Allstate and you've considered all those things and we can make doing Allstate work out, here are some tips to help you have the best experience in your preparation for Allstate. So one of the first things I make sure I tell all of my students is really know in and out what your specific requirements are. Florida on a regular basis will go through some changes and the list of requirements that they give you when you get that sheet can be a little dense. So just make sure you really go through it and make sure you know exactly what requirements you are supposed to do. And don't trust that what you did last year is what you're doing this year. And not just like if you were an eighth grader and you're moving up to ninth grade, but if you're like a ninth grader doing nine, going from ninth grade to 10th grade, and you're in even in the same band, your requirements might change. They do alter these things from year to year. You know, it's not often, but just make sure you know exactly what you're doing, especially if you're going from middle school to high school. That's when they add a ton of different requirements. So just make sure you know exactly what you're supposed to do. In general, everybody's going to have a set of scales. You're gonna play your chromatic, your two little, you know, tune ditties, your lyrical and your technical, and then you're gonna have a sight reading. And understand, these are requirements. So if you are unable to perform, let's say the lyrical etude within the given metronomic measures, let's say, let's say it says it wants it at 80 and you can only play it up to 72. I'm not saying it's a death sentence for your audition, but it's going to probably mean you are not going to pass through the audition phase. Or like if you can play, you know, a bunch of scales, but for some odd reason, you just can't play the G flat arpeggio. So you just leave it out. That actually is probably a death sentence for your audition. Requirements literally mean requirements. You have to do them. That's the bare minimum. And then you go from there. So if you cannot perform any of those requirements, you're not going to succeed in your audition. I've had students come back to me on Monday morning, bless their heart, and be like, hey, I totally met, did, forgot like two of my scales and I didn't play any of my arpeggios, but I think I have a shot. Okay, so let's talk about now the tip for preparation. Prepare gradually, start now, prepare slow. So what I mean by start now, start slow, like with my studio, what we do is I will actually do two weeks per etude. So with the lyrical etude, they're gonna spend two weeks on it. The first week they're gonna play the front half, second week they're gonna play the back half. Then same thing with the technical and we will move on from there. And I actually will largely kind of abandon really working on the Allstate etudes for the rest of their lessons throughout, you know, July and early August. Once we get closer to the actual audition though, I'll start to bring them back. Now that's just me. I just don't like one particular thing taking over my entire lesson. Some lesson teachers are completely fine with that. I just find that for me, it's boring. One, uh, two, it's not in the best interest of the student in my opinion. Uh, and then three, it also makes it so I am less engaged in the lesson because I'm just listening to them play the same 24 bars for like 12 straight weeks. So chunk it up, work on the stuff really slow, slow down the metronomic marking. If you learn it and then you just have to get it faster, that's all you have to do. But if you're messy with it, then it becomes a problem. And again, start now. Try your best to not put it off until 
you know, three or four weeks before the audition or, you know, a week before the audition. We all go into summer having the best intentions for practicing and then we get caught up into things and it's so easy to and it's totally understandable, but try to be disciplined with yourself. Make yourself a practice schedule. Just make sure you are tackling the etudes. Third big tip in your preparation, especially with all the time we have this summer, is get help. Either, you know, talk to your band director about maybe listening to you or listening to a recording of you or maybe talk to if you have a section leader that you look up to who's a fantastic player, maybe talk to them or even consider getting private lessons. You know, it's not a requirement to be in private lessons in order to make Allstate. However, most of the people I chat with when I'm at the conference and who come up with me and chat with me, most of them are in private lessons. Most of them have gotten some sort of outside help, not even just from their band director, but like some other person on their instruments. Somebody else has helped them or they took lessons during a band camp or something like they did not just like keep to their own. Now, it's not a requirement. That's not 100% like for everybody. I'm sure there are other situations, but it is most people that I've experienced. And heck, I mean, feel free to give me a buzz. And if you want to take a lesson with me or anything along those lines, my contact information is always in the description down below. And I teach online lessons and digital lessons. You don't have to be in here in Tampa and you don't have to take weekly lessons with me if you just want to play your Allstate one time for me and get my opinions and take an hour long lesson. Come on, let's go, let's do it. Another thing that's going to help you, another tip that I have is audition as much as you possibly can. Your mom, your dad, your dog, your sister, whatever. Like just audition as much as you possibly can. Just do the act as much as you can to get into what that feels like. And if you have other friends who are auditioning for Allstate, offer to audition for them and have, you know, get you listen to them. And when you do these auditions, don't just say, hey, listen to me. Don't just do that. Actually have some extra music for them for your lyrical and your technical. Actually have some extra music for them. Maybe you have a book that you can use that has some sight readings in it that you can just say, hey, just open this page, point at anything, I'll read the first eight bars or something along those lines. Treat it as close as you possibly can. Get feedback from them. Be understanding in your feedback. The best that even I've personally ever done in any audition situation has always been when I have auditioned like 20 or 30 times for just random people. Even with professional auditions, when I've moved on to final rounds or been offered jobs, it's been the auditions where I would literally pull like my friend who plays cello into my practice room and I hand them the music and I'm like, hey, listen to these excerpts and just listen to me play. Let me get your feedback. The other thing is too, is if you are letting them audition for you or you're listening to auditions, you also get to kind of flip the script a little bit. You get to see what it's like to be an adjudicator and how actually hard it is to hear as many mistakes as you think there is. So that's also a really good exercise for you to really think about leave, leaving off the pressure of yourself because as an adjudicator, it's we don't hear as much as you know you're screwing up. And my last big tip that will really help you with getting ready for Allstate is make sure that you record yourself after every single practice session, just doing a run through of whatever it was you were working on. So let's say you're doing your technical etude and you really worked on the first four measures of it. That's fantastic. Do a run through of those four measures or if you're later in the process, a run through of the entire technical. The recording device, and it doesn't have to be fancy, it can be your phone, it can be anything like that. I'll leave a link in the description for what I use, but it doesn't have to be fancy. You, all you're doing is when you go and you set that recording device to record and just you play for that, that's what you do for Allstate. You're playing for a box. So that person in the room doesn't have anything to do with your audition. So you might as well kind of get used to that, but also it leaves you the opportunity to kind of get rid of your self judging and getting rid of you being an adjudicator to yourself at the moment. And it allows for you to just perform kind of like you are for Allstate and then go back and listen to what happened. And then the other thing too is that recording's not lying. It, it, you're gonna hear your chips. You're gonna hear, you know, your out of tuneness and whatever. And let's be real, especially on tuba, you can't trust what's happening on the other side of the bell. So it's gonna be, you know, pretty much telling you exactly what you're doing. And then you can take notes on what you're doing and that becomes your hit list. That becomes what you need to work on when you come back and practice next time you hit whatever etude you were working on. And then at the day of the audition, make sure that you get a good warm up at home. 
get there early, but not too early. You wanna be on time, you wanna be able to go to the warm up room and get a little bit of a warm up in, but don't overdo your warm up. You're just kind of re getting things through. Don't play the etude a thousand, like just get in there, play a few notes with enough time to just kind of leisurely be able to do it. Go use the bathroom and then go to your audition room. And honestly, stay away from that warm-up room as much as you can. Your friends are gonna be there trying to socialize with you or you're gonna see people that you know from like all county or something. Just not to be rude, but stay away from them. You know, just say hello, hey, I'm, I gotta get ready for my audition, thanks man, I'll, I'll catch you later. Whatever you need to do, um, go in there, play a few notes, but and just try to stay away from there. It's a lot of noise, it, there's just a lot of things to take in. You're already gonna be, you know, at a high stress level you don't need more of it. When you go and you're waiting outside of the audition room, try to separate yourself from the audition room as much as you possibly can so that you're not involving yourself with the person in front of you. That be, that being, you're not listening to them. You know, if they're doing really well, you're gonna start judging yourself and maybe they're playing something faster so you feel like you have to play it faster or something. Or if they're doing very badly, you're gonna like get this overly confident thing. Yeah, like, just separate yourself from the person in front of you. This audition's about you and what they are doing does not change or impact how you are going to play. So, and just don't let them, just stay away from it as best you possibly can. I've honestly done auditions where in the waiting room I've had noise canceling headphones. I don't think you need to go to that extreme, but it is something I've done before. And remember, everybody in that building who is, you know, the runners, the room runners, or the proctors, or the, like all of those people, are cheering for you, they want you to do well, but they also don't have control over your audition. The person in the room is not listening to your audition for a score. They might be listening, they're in the room, they might as well, but they don't score your audition. So even if you know that they're the band director in your area who plays trombone really well, they still don't have control over your score. They're not the ones listening to you for your audition. So don't even, they're not there. It's just like the recordings you were doing when you were practicing. But those are all my tips. I hope they're really helpful. And that leads me to my question of the day, which is if you happen to have any tips that were really helpful for you, maybe a teacher shared them with you, or it's something you discovered along the line when you were going through your audition process, let me know in the comments down below. And that's all I've got. I just want one closing statement for you because I teach a lot of people and I wrote it down. So you're gonna see me looking down because I wanna make sure I do it right. But remember, Allstate's great and it can be a fantastic experience. However, the audition is just a snapshot of your abilities and of your overall musical career. Though I've had many students who have made Allstate and I am a professional on my instruments, I never made Allstate. You're not defined as a good or a bad musician because of this audition. It's just a way for us to thin out musicians in the state because Florida is so large that we can't put all of you on stage at one time. I'm, I mean, the convention center is huge, but even that stage can't, I don't even think it could hold all of just the trombone players. Uh, definitely not their egos. If you make it, that's awesome. Congratulations. You should be extremely proud of yourself. And I look forward to seeing you at the convention. However, if you didn't make it, that is also fantastic. And I hope you learn something from the experience because you are now better prepared for any audition that's going to happen after this. You should still be extremely proud of yourself and you should feel happy with the whole process, not just the outcome of the audition. But anyway, that's all I've got for you. Be happy, never satisfied.